Hi, today I'd like to give you a look at three different tablets and compare them for how they work for reading um, and other tasks for people with dyslexia. So instead of focusing on the specs of these tablets, I'm going to focus more on the usage and how they work with some text-to-speech and um, other reading and learning features. So we have the Nexus 7. This is the newer model that came out um, in 2013 the Kindle Fire HDX. We have the 7 inch version and the iPad mini with retina display. So we're going to go through these tablets and uh, look at some of the features that are really impressive uh, for people with reading dis disabilities. So first I'd like to talk briefly about the design of these three tablets. They're all smaller tablets um, around 7 or um, 8 inches. This one, the Nexus 7, is very easy to hold in one hand, which is perfect for reading. It's uh, very thin and has a soft plastic backing, um, which feels pretty nice in the hand. Um, going on the Amazon, Kindle Fire is about the same width, but a little shorter than the Nexus 7. It has an angular back, which doesn't feel as nice in the hand as the Nexus 7, but it's still very easy to hold with one hand for a long period of time. The iPad mini with retina display similarly, similarly has a, a small display that is um, one that you can grab with one hand. It's a little bit bigger, but it's still um, fine for holding with one hand and uh, reading for a while. All these tablets are thin, and um, when you look at a tablet that you're going to be reading a lot with, with text-to-speech or um, audiobooks, it's important to consider the speaker quality. Um, all three have pretty good speakers. The Nexus 7 has uh, speakers here and here, which means that it's going to be hard to block out the sound, because if you're covering this side with one hand, this side will be open. The Kindle Fire also has two speakers, um, and the sound quality is good as well. The iPad has dual speakers, but both are at the bottom, so it's possible to cover them up when you're reading in landscape mode. But um, if you're careful about not blocking the speakers, all three of these tablets have great sound quality. So as you see, all three tablets have great designs. But what, they really start to differentiate themselves when it comes to the software. The Nexus 7 runs Android. Um, this version is running KitKat. And it's a nice operating system that works very fluidly on the tablet. One of my favorite features that I've found with KitKat is the ability to use speech recognition even when you're offline. So if I go to Chrome and I want to speak a search, I can press the microphone assistive technology blog and it recognizes my voice and types it into the search field but as you can see I can even turn off my Wi-Fi connection go back to a text field and I'm still able to speak assistive technology blog so that's a very nice feature Android also has um, a number of accessibility options that you can find in settings. Um, these um, accessibility features are um, not as developed as on the iPad, but they're getting better and they can um, really help, especially TalkBack, which can um, give you text-to-speech um, in certain apps, which I'll get into a little bit later. So, it has um it has a special Amazon OS which is a version of Android but you can see it looks very different from the stock Android found on the Nexus 7 it too has dictation that works pretty well not as well as the Nexus 7 but about on par with the iPad and it has um app support as well. Now the app support on the Kindle 
is not as as good as it is on the Nexus 7 and not nearly as good as it is on the iPad. Built into the um, Kindle OS, you get accessibility features such as um, the same type of talkback that you get on the Nexus 7, but it's not as well developed and fluid as on the iPad. One of the best features of the um, Kindle Fire HDX is the Mayday button that you can press for help and a live chat assistant will help you at any time. I'll show it to you really quick. To the software. The iPad has the most robust and um, mature accessibility features. They work great. Um, it includes a screen reader that can read almost everything on screen and a feature called speak selection which allows you to highlight any text that you can highlight and press speak to have it read aloud. You can slow that down of course. Um, the iPad doesn't have a feature where you can easily um, support multiple users. It has guided access where you can lock somebody in one particular app but you can't do something that you can do on the Nexus 7 which is to um, give give a multi true multi-user support so here I set up um, a fake account and this could be for a student or for um, your kid if you only want them to use certain apps and be blocked from others the Kindle has this feature as well where you can give um, a kid certain apps to use and tell the tablet how long they're allowed to use those apps. All three tablets have um, speech recognition support built in so you can just tap a button and begin speaking to the tablet. The Nexus 7 has the best um, speech recognition software and it even allows you to use speech, rec speech recognition when it's offline. So I'm gonna quickly show you how that works. Um, I'm just gonna type in my password off the screen. So here I'm in Google Chrome on the Nexus 7, which is the default browser, and I can um, click here to read. And I'm not on Wi-Fi, and I can just press this, Assistive Technology Blog, and it uh, transcribes what I just said, even when it's not connected to the Internet. The Kindle has speech recognition even when it's not connected to the Internet, but it doesn't work as well as the Nexus 7. The iPad also has speech recognition but it doesn't work at all when you're not on the internet so that's a big plus if you're a big speech recognition user for the Nexus 7 in terms of reading feature the Kindle Fire has some really cool features one of the coolest and most elegant is called immersion reading so here I have Moby Dick and um, it has professional narrated um, audiobook through Audible, and I have the ebook. So what that means is I can merge the two and have a professional narrator read me the book and have it highlight as it goes along. So let me turn up the volume so I can show you. And to start, I just press play. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago. Never mind how long, precisely. Having little or no money in my purse and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. It is a way I have of driving off the spleen. And, and you can see it reads in a professionally narrated voice and highlights as it goes along. This is great because you get a very good, high-quality audiobook and the highlighting with the ebook. Now it can get expensive because you have to buy both the audiobook version and the ebook version. So keep in mind that it might get expensive. If you don't if a book doesn't have immersion reading or you just don't want to use it, you can also enable text to speech by going to settings, applications, reader settings, and turning on text to speech for available titles. Then when you go into a book, You can press play 
to have it read aloud with text to speech. Or the Whale by Herman Melville. Chapter 1 Loomings. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse, and nothing particular to interest me on shore, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. So that's how it reads with text to speech. Um, unfortunately, it's not available for all titles, but it is available for many. And the voice is pretty good. It also has accessibility options built in, and you can change the reading speed. Oh, um, you can turn change the reading speed of the screen reader. Increase off rate off alert screen reader. But there doesn't seem to be a way to increase the speaking rate of um the actual title with um text to speech. Take a look at some of the reading features of the Nexus Seven. So the Nexus 7 has Bookshare and Learning Ally apps that you can download, but they're not as good or as um, advanced as the Bookshare and Learning Ally apps on the iPad. You can also download Kindle and Nook apps if you want to read with those, but Google has their own app offering called Playbooks that has some cool accessibility features. Just like on the iPad and the Kindle, you can highlight words and, get, and get definitions. And, as you just saw, um, this is a handy code. Says he you can activate um, text-to-speech reading. So to do that, you just um, go to the three-dot menu and press read aloud. This is a handy code. Says he at length and a pleasant city at a broad shop. Much company, mate. My father told him that... And you see it reads along um, and it highlights. Unfortunately, it doesn't highlight word by word. It highlights sentence by sentence. But it's still a good offering. Um, that being said, this voice is the default voice, and it's pretty good, it's passable, but you can also download more advanced voices from um, different vendors if you want to get a more high-quality voice onto your Nexus. Let's talk about some of the iPad's reading features. The iPad has some really great reading features for people with dyslexia, but most of these features come thanks to... Um, third-party apps, not Apple's own iBooks app. Um, you can download the Bookshare and Learning Ally app onto the iPad, and these apps are um, very good and optimized specifically for the iPad. The Voice Dream Reader app is also a great option for reading Bookshare books and any type of um, text with text-to-speech iBooks and um, iBooks and the Kindle app are accessible using VoiceOver um, to get text-to-speech output, but the learning curve is a bit higher than um, using Google Playbooks on the Nexus 7, for example, or immersion reading on the Kindle Fire. Also, reading iBooks and Kindle books on the iPad, you don't get highlighted highlighting along with the text-to-speech. That being said, if you want to use the, your tablet for reading um, Learning Ally or Bookshare books, the iPad is really your best option. Talk about each reader side by side and talk specifically about their reading features and which one might be best for you. So as I mentioned before, if you're someone who reads a lot of Bookshare or Learning Ally books, the iPad is really the way to go because it has the best support for Bookshare and Learning Ally. If not, and you're somebody who wants to use your tablet for reading, but you don't use Learning Ally or Bookshare, um, you have three great options. So, if you, use, if you want the Nexus 7, that's great if you um, can buy into the Google ecosystem with the Google Play Books. And, um, if you want to do um, some other reading with the Kindle app, um, with that text-to-speech with the built-in accessibility. But the Amazon Kindle uh, Fire, if, you have, if you're not going to use Bookshare or Learning Ally on it, 
has one of the most elegant features, which is the immersion reading, which is that syncing of the professional audio with the text of the book. This is a very elegant feature, but it is costly because you have to buy the audio version of the book and the digital version of the book for it to work. So this can start to add up very quickly. Also, with the Kindle, you have to keep in mind that you're going to have the least amount of sources to choose from. Because with the iPad, you can choose from iBooks, Nook, and Amazon, and with the um, and Google Play, and with the Nexus 7, you can choose from Google Play, Amazon, and Barnes and Noble's Nook offerings. With the Kindle, you're really locked into the Amazon ecosystem. Now, if that's okay with you, and you're willing to pay the extra money for immersion reading, and you're not going to use Bookshare or Learning Ally, the Kindle Fire may be the way to go for you. If you're not so much into Bookshare and cost is an issue for you, but you'd like to use Bookshare or Learning Ally on your device sometimes, the Nexus 7 would be a good option. And then for reading, if you really want the best of all the, of all the um, options and the best support for Bookshare and Learning Ally, the iPad is the way to go. Now we talked about which device is best for reading experience. Let's talk about them as overall tablets. So the iPad, in my opinion, is the best overall tablet because it has the best support for apps, especially assistive apps like Inspiration, Voice Dream Reader, Prismo, PDF Expert, and so on and so on. Um, you can use it to get some stuff done more than the other tablets, but you'll still probably want a computer for writing longer documents. The Nexus 7 is a very nice tablet for reading the web and um, browsing browsing magazines and stuff, and it does have solid reading features with the Google Play books. That being said, it doesn't have as solid built-in accessibility, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to read web pages and magazines with text-to-speech than on the iPad. The Nexus 7 does have good app support, but not quite as good as the iPad. Then going on to the uh, Kindle Fire. It's very good for reading, especially with immersion reading, and it has decent app support. Not really close to the iPad and still lagging behind the Nexus 7, but it has decent app support. The best, the most well-known ones will likely be on their store, um, and has good reading features. That being said, you probably won't be getting um, too much productivity done with it, um, but it's great for consuming content. Also, um, if you're going to be sharing the tablet between a lot of people, the Nexus 7 or Kindle Fire might be a better option to consider um, because you, have, you can set up multiple users. It's not like you can't share the iPad, but these have specialized features to help you do it more easily.